Hello everybody, Calamity here, and today I have a character guide that was requested by y'all in the comments. Today we're going to be talking about Eula. We're going to go over everything you need to know about her, from her talents, weapon recommendations, artifact recommendations, constellations, team comps, and last but not least, a combat showcase at the very end. Before we start, I just want to give a shout out to my homie Homegrown for letting me borrow his account because I do not have Eula on mine, and we have a lot of ground to cover. This is probably going to be a long video. Heads up, so let's get started. Eula is considered to be the best physical damage dealer in the game. You know that meme of Spider-Man holding the train back from falling? Well, Eula is the Spider-Man in this case, and she's the one holding back physical damage team comps from being forgotten out of existence. I also think Eula is probably one of the more complex characters in Genshin Impact and she definitely has a lot of depth to her character and like utilizing her kit well. First off we have the uh, normal attack talent which is called the Favonius Blade Work. As we can see in the talent info for the normal attack it doesn't look any different than any other uh, character's uh, normal attack talent and that is because there are there are no special mechanics to it. However this is one of the main sources of Eula's damage so it's very important to get this leveled. If we look at the skill attributes they're pretty high. I mean she is a claymore user after all for, for a normal attack uh, talent. Uh, one thing I want to point out is that for her third hit damage it has two multipliers and that is because she strikes twice this is going to be important to note so you don't get confused because eula has an, a popular combo that many people use on her and in this combo you have to do the normal attack four times hopefully you don't get confused with the third hit because again the third hit hits twice you want to do one more hit after that I'll talk about this when we get to the combo section. Next up, we have the elemental skill, which does have a press and hold version. Now, normally for most characters in Genshin Impact, we usually pick one or the other, right? Like for example, for Bennett, we just use the press version of his skill. For Nahida, you're most likely to use the hold version. For Eula, you're gonna be actually using both. They're both very important to her kit and very important to her combo. So let's talk about what they do. The press version is pretty simple. You'll just do a uh, swift slash with uh, that deals cryo damage, and you'll get what's called a Grim Heart stack, which can be stacked up to two times. Grim Heart, as we can see on the left, just gives Eula uh, resistance interruption, which is kind of like having a shield, but you know without the actual shield, and increases her defense. This is something I think a lot of people forget about Eula is that she can actually increase her own defense passively. Uh, you can actually tell how many Grim stacks Eula has by looking at the number of swords on her back when you use her elemental skill. So you'll see one sword when you have one stack and then you'll see two swords when you have the second one. Now let's take a look at the hold version. So when you do the hold version, you're going to consume both stacks or all of your stacks of Grimheart. It should be two. Uh, and then you'll lash forward dealing another AoE cryo damage attack. When you consume your Grimheart stacks, you're going to reduce physical and cryo res of nearby opponents. Your Grimheart stacks will also be converted into what's called an Ice Swirl Brain, which deals cryo damage to nearby opponents. It's actually a pretty nice res decrease. So Yula has a 24% fizz and cryo res decrease when you use the whole version of her skill. It also has pretty nice damage as well. And you can see that you're gonna get a decent amount of defense. The Grimhearts last 18 seconds. There's two different cooldowns for this skill. If you do the press version, it's four seconds. If you do the hold version, it's 10. That's also something important to keep in mind. Now let's move on to her burst. Now this is the big one. This is what makes Eula, you know, the queen of the physical damage dealers. This burst is basically a nuclear bomb ready to go off. Once you use her elemental burst and you see that really cool animation, you have seven seconds to deal as much damage as you can in order to make this light fall sword that you're building up do as much damage as possible. In order to do this, the, thank the Eula mains, they've already come up with a pretty, I would say fairly easy enough combo that most players can pull off to be able to get the most stacks before the sword crashes down and does its big damage. So to try to briefly explain how this burst works, after you cast your burst, you have, again, you have seven seconds to deal as much damage as you can, and you do this to build stacks. Eula gains stacks during her burst when she does normal attacks. Elemental uses her elemental skill, either the hold or the press version. 
And Eula can only gain a stack every 0.1 seconds, so you can't do multiple attacks at the same time to get multiple stacks. It just doesn't work that way, unfortunately. There needs to be a slight delay between each attack to gain a stack. So let's take a look at the attributes. So we can see the skill damage is the initial hit with the burst, and it, it's actually pretty good, right? But if we look at the Lightfall Sword base damage with a skill multiplier of 725.6%. Now keep in mind this is a crown talent, so yours is probably going to look a little less uh, at level 8 or 9. That's already huge. That's like Zhongli's, you know, meteor huge. But the fact that you can get additional damage per stack is what makes... If you've ever seen those YouTube screenshots, you know, my Eula did... 500k damage, 700k damage, you know, even a million damage with her burst. This is why. This is so much skill multiplier. I want to say this is more skill multiplier than any, you know, burst or skill in the game. It does have a maximum of 30 stacks. Unfortunately, most free-to-play or low spender characters will not be able to reach uh, the maximum amount of stacks. Most of y'all will probably get around less than half of that. So you're looking around maybe 12 to 14 stacks uh, if you do the combo correctly. It does have a 20 second cooldown with an 80 energy cost. So energy recharge is a very important stat for Eula because you want this burst to be available as much as possible. Next up, we have a Rolling Rhyme. This is her first Ascension uh, talent. If two stacks of Grimheart are consumed upon unleashing the holding mode of Ice Tide Vortex, a shattered light foil sword will be created that will explode immediately, dealing 50% of the basic physical damage dealt by a light for light fall sword created by glacial illumination. So this is like a mini nuke before your nuclear bomb when you use your elemental skill, the hold version of your elemental skill, which we do again in the combo. So you'll be taking advantage of this talent for sure. And it basically just adds more damage to your combo overall. So nice talent there. Next up, we have Wellspring of Warlust, which is going to grant you an additional stack of Grimheart when you use your burst. It will also reset the cooldown of your elemental skill when you use your burst. So really nice stack. Uh, or, sorry, really nice uh, talent there for Eula. And lastly, Eula has a 10% chance to double your product when you're crafting character talent materials, which is a nice passive talent, I suppose, but uh, Jing Cho has the more reliable one. So let's continue on with weapon recommendations. So Homegrown here has the Serpent Spine, which is a good weapon for her. I mean, it does have the substat of crit rate and gives her more damage through the weapons effect. Holy crap, this thing is refinement 5. Um, but I, it's a weapon that I, I find hard to recommend to, to new players or obviously free-to-play uh, players because you need to purchase the battle pass in order to get this weapon. So if you're looking at me and you're asking, hey, is there anything free-to-play friendly for a Eula? Absolutely! The prototype archaic is probably a, a good starter, decent weapon for Eula because it's, again, just something you can get early on. You can craft it as early as, as in Mondstadt. Um, it is just going to give you a subset of attack percentage, but it's a good place to start. Another weapon that you can also craft is the Snow Tomed Star Silver. This is something you can start crafting uh, once you get to Dragon Spine. This one also provides you physical damage bonus as a subset, which is even better than just attack percentage. Uh, furthermore, uh, you don't have to refinement. Uh, increase the refinement of this weapon if you don't want to. It will just increase the icicle uh, that drops when you use this weapon. Um, again, you don't have to. It, if you want to, you can. I'm not here to tell you how to use your resources or how to not use them, but uh, you can just get this to level 90 and then call it there if you so choose. I try not to recommend event weapons because, you know, they're not available to newer players that weren't around at the time, but I feel like it's worth mentioning the Luxurious Sea Lord is a good weapon on Eula, and I mention it only because it looks hilarious to have your Eula swing around a gigantic fish. It is actually pretty good if you can if you do have this weapon. It's a good option for her, a good free-to-play option, and it looks funny. Another weapon option that uh, Homegrown doesn't have here is the Akuo Maru. The, this is the Claymore in the Inazuma uh, weapons that increases your burst damage based on your team's burst cost. So since Eula already has an 80 burst cost, you're off to a solid start there. Pair-ups with some teammates that have really high burst costs 
and your Eula's burst damage is going to be off the charts. Now for 5 star weapons, honestly anything is good for your Eula. If you were able to get the Beacon of the Reed Sea during Dia's banner, solid weapon there. Even the Unforged that uh, Homegrown has here. This is also a great weapon for uh, Eula here. Um, Red, Red Thorn uh, Stone Thresher, I think that's what it's called. Uh, that's uh, Arataki Ito's signature weapon. Don't forget, Eula increases her defense passively, so she can actually take advantage of the weapon's effect. Um, Skyward, uh, I believe Skyward Pride, that's the Claymore one. Yeah, if you have that, also a solid weapon, it's going to cover her energy recharge needs for sure. So you can feel free to go ham on those damage uh, stats on your artifacts. Wolf's Gravestone, that's a weapon also available in the standard banner. Also a good choice for Eula. And of course, if you are able to pull for her signature weapon, I mean, nothing is going to beat her own signature weapon that was designed specifically for her. That's going to be her best weapon, of course. So tons and tons of weapon options for your Eula, whether you're free to play or, you know, low spender. All right, next up, we have artifacts to talk about. When it comes to picking your artifact set, you definitely want to go for a Pale Flame four piece set. Um, there is an alternate option if you want to go for it as well. It's to go for two piece uh, Pale Flame and then two piece Bloodstained Chivalry. I don't think, oh, there. So this set right here, it's in the Noblesse Oblige domain. Uh, so you can do two piece Pale Flame, two piece Bloodstained for basically 50% physical damage passively. It's a nice alternative and you don't, it doesn't have a, like a requirement. Like the Pale Flame has a requirement. Uh, you need to hit your elemental skill to get the attack buff and it only lasts for a few, uh, seven seconds, but it is, the Pale Flame is going to give you the most overall damage. As long as you can keep up the effect of the four piece, you're good. What are we looking for when it comes to building uh, Eula's artifacts? Well, since she is our main carry, our main DPS carry in the team, we are looking for the usual crit rate, crit damage. You are also looking for energy recharge. Now, recommending a specific amount of energy recharge is never easy because everyone uses different teams, different weapons, and things like that. So when it comes to energy recharge, I would say a good range to go for is 140% to around 160%. Now, obviously, if you're using characters like Diona, if you're using Raiden Shogun, who provide, you know, tons and tons of energy to, for your Eula, your energy requirements can go much lower. Also, if anyone in your team has like a Favonius weapon, also your requirement, your energy requirements go even lower than that. And then you can try to adjust your, your energy recharge as needed. Once you get your energy set up, then it's going to be attack percentage, flat attack. We do not want elemental mastery on Eula though. She is doing purely physical damage. Elemental mastery does nothing for that. It's just one less stat that you need to look out for. You do want attack percentage. Again, no elemental mastery here. In some cases, if you're having a really, really hard time getting any energy recharge for Eula, you can opt in for an energy recharge main stat, although it might give a little too much energy recharge, but I would say that's definitely a, a, a filler piece or a, like a stepping stone piece until you can get an attack percentage one with good substats. For the goblet, physical damage bonus, of course, is what you're looking for. Attack percentage uh, is going to be your second best option. For the circlet, crit rate or crit damage, whichever one you feel like you need more of. Uh, but because Eula is cryo and you do you get cryo resonance in most of her team comps? You'll get a decent chunk of crit rate there. If you use Rosaria, she gives you a decent, decent crit rate amount depending on how you built her. So more than likely, you're going to be looking for a crit damage circlet. Um, let's move on to the constellations, which, oh my god, homegrown, you have C1. <laughs> what the heck? I didn't even know this. Anyways, uh, just like most characters, Eula's constellations do just increase her damage overall. Um, but there are a few uh, notable ones that we should definitely talk about. But let's start with C1, the one that Homegrown has here. And every time you, your Grimheart stacks are consumed from your by using your elemental skill, Eula will gain a 30% physical damage increase for 6 seconds. This is actually really good because you use the whole version of Eula's skill uh, towards the end of her combo. So that means your burst that does a ton of damage just got a 30% uh, damage increase, which is fantastic. C2 is definitely a quality of life constellation and not so much a damage increase. It's going to make your cooldown of doing the hold version the same as if you had pressed 
the elemental skill. So it's going to be four seconds regardless of what you did. If you held it, if you pressed it, four second cooldown, which is actually really nice. Now I'm not advanced enough of a Eula main to know if this opens up more combo opportunities for you, but it is a nice constellation to have regardless. So C3 and C5 are going to increase burst and skill respectively. Getting three levels to your burst is going to be a very, very nice damage increase. I'm sure the skill multiplier is going to look something like 900% at this rate. Getting three skill uh, levels on your skill though, it's nice, but you know, it, it, this is honestly probably her worst constellation in terms of uh, damage increase. C4 is going to make, make it so that your Lightfall Swords deal 25% increased damage against opponents with less than 50 HP. Uh, this is very nice for bosses and very nice for Spiral Abyss in general, just because even regular enemies in the Spiral Abyss have tons and tons of HP. So just getting to that halfway point, you know, is going to be the difference between you getting that three stars or coming up short. C6 is where the free-to-play players get jealous of the whales. Remember how I said... Most players won't be able to get the maximum stacks of Eula's burst. Well, if you were able to get to C6 on your Eula, that changes because you have now have an additional chance to gain an extra stack while you're building your Lightfall Sword stacks. It's a 50% chance. So if you're doing the same combo with Eula, you're probably going to average out around maybe like 24, maybe a little more or less. 24 stacks on your uh, Eula uh, before the burst goes off. Now, I, I have no idea if there are any sort of Eula combos to consistently get 30 stacks uh, every time after you use her burst. Um, that's way too much money spent and advanced for me to know. All right, let's talk about team comps. Eula is a character that has only one team comp, but it has a lot of variations of that team comp. So when you're building your Eula, you want some sort of combination of Cryo and Electro members in your party. And this is because Eula really wants the Superconduct Elemental Reaction, which reduces physical damage resistance on your enemies. That is it. So when it comes to building your Eula, you do want sort of a team like this, but again, there's lots of variations. So let's talk about them. So we have Mika here as our healer and our latest, you know, four star character that was added in the last event or last update um, that actually helps physical damage dealers by increasing fizz damage, reducing fizz resistance. And he also does healing and increases attack speed, which is all good stuff. Uh, for Mika though, you're definitely going to want to get him to C6 just, to, just so that he can provide your Eula with the maximum amount of buffs to your Eula for the best amount of damage. But heck, even having him before C6 is going to be a nice asset to your team. Raiden Shogun is here. She's definitely a popular uh, pick for Eula mains because she does lots of electro off-field application for consistent superconducts. And of course, she can do her she can hold her own as a sub DPS in this case, where she will use her burst to refill your team's energy, helping your Eula burst more consistently. Now the fourth slot, Homegrown has Kujo Sara here, and you can definitely use her if you want. This is more of the flex slot. So let's say you don't have Kujo Sara, or even if you don't have Raiden or even Mika, like who can you use uh, with your Eula? Let's give you some, some ideas, some options. Kuki Shinobu is an option that you could definitely use. She's gonna fill the role of a healer as well as your electro applier if you don't have like a Raiden Shogun. She also could be equipped with a Favonius uh, sword just so she can provide more energy for your team. Yun Jin is probably gonna be an option I feel like is definitely underrated when it comes to Eula. Yun Jin buffs normal attacks, which Eula does the majority of. You don't really use her charge attacks at all. Bennett is also another popular option for Eula, but you need to keep in mind your Bennett cannot be C6. If he is C6, then unfortunately your Bennett cannot be used with Eula because of the pyro conversion, which will mess up your Eula's damage because you don't want her doing pyro damage. You want her doing Fizz. Diona is also another popular character to be used with uh, Eula. She provides healing, she provides shields, and if you give her a sacrificial bow, tons and tons of cryo uh, particles for your, U for your Eula, for sure. Rosaria, another popular option for Eula. Just another easy cryo battery. An again, Favonius Lance is a very popular weapon to use on her and provides a crit rate through her burst, as well as some off-field cryo application 
for setting up those superconducts. Fischl is another popular electro uh, applicator, just tons and tons of electro. She's a solid replacement for Raiden if you don't have her. Another underrated option, this is if you don't have Zhongli or I guess your Dione shield just isn't cutting it, but Layla is also a really good option for Eula with providing a very powerful shield as well as some decent cryo application, again, just to set up those superconducts. If you're going up against multiple enemies, Beto is an awesome option for Eula. Being able to spread around the electro damage using her burst, mixing that with the uh, cryo and getting the superconducts on a bunch of enemies is big, big damage. And another option that I'll mention, which is probably going to be underrated and forgotten, is Dory. Dory is a, another electro healer, um, although I would probably argue that, well, I would probably say that Kuki Shinobu is probably the better one here. But if you do have Dory, you can use her with your Eula. She does provide uh, healing and energy to your team. She can provide up to like 20, 25, maybe a little bit more with consolations uh, to your Eula, which is going to be very, very nice. Again, this is if you don't have Raiden Shogun or you don't have Kuki Shinobu or uh, other electro characters you can use but she is an option so hopefully you can find a team setup that fits your eula again very versatile character oh and a, another character i forgot to mention is lisa lisa is also really good for your eula you can slap on like a thrilling tales of dragon slayers don't forget lisa has a 15 percent defense shred as one of her talents and she applies tons and tons of electro uh on your opponents so good options there now, I want to talk about combos with Eula. This isn't usually a section I have for a lot of characters because, you know, previously I've been talking about like sub DPS characters and healers and, and well, you don't really have to do combos with them. For main characters, or uh, main DPS characters though, some of them do have um, combos and Eula is such a character. So here we go. We're going to, for the sake of simplicity and to save your time here, because this video is already going on for way too long. We're only just going to cover one combo with Eula that involves using her entire kit. It's pretty easy to do. It might take you a couple practice, you know, tries to get it. But once you get the hang of it, it's not too bad. So I'm going to go over it slowly with you. And then we'll showcase it some more in the when we fight some bosses and stuff later on. So before we start, do you remember how I was talking about Eula's normal attacks and I was talking about her third hitting twice? I mention this just so that new players don't get confused when doing her combo. Because the first part of Eula's combo, when you start using her normal attacks, is to do them four times. So her normal attacks look like this. This is one, two, that's three. Despite her hitting twice there, that is three. So one, two, three, four. When you see her turn around and put her sword on her back like that, that is the fourth hit. Okay? We're making this... Really easy and simple for y'all to, to understand. So the entire combo is to use the tap version first of Eula's elemental skill. So it's going to be this. You start with that. So let's wait for the cooldown. So you do this into her burst. So right after you do the skill burst, then it's going to be followed up by four normal attacks that I just showed you. Then we do the hold version of the elemental skill followed by four more normal attacks and then by the time your last normal attack goes off that's when the nuclear bomb of your alt crashes down so i'll just show the combo here uh i'll just show the combo and what it looks like here so we do the elemental skill first four into the hold skill, four again. See how I did, as soon as I did that fourth uh, normal attack, the sword exploded. Um, that's basically what the combo looks like. So if you need to replay that section over and over again to, to get a better visual understanding, feel free to do so. Now, I gotta rebuild my Eula's alt <laughs> and we're gonna fight some bosses so you can see what it looks like in action. But before I do, I do want to mention something that's a little bit advanced here, but it's worth mentioning because otherwise the Eula mains are going to comment and beat me up about it. So during the combo, when I said you do the hold version of the skill, which is this. Um, 
Due to Eula's Ascension 1 talent, you get that extra sword hit, right? You're not seeing it here because I didn't consume any Grimheart stacks. I don't have any. Um, but you'll get that extra mini nuke before your actual alt goes off. A little trick that you want to do to get yourself an extra stack before the burst goes off is to delay your hit. So at the part of the combo when you do this, the hold skill, before you go straight into N like four normal attacks, you want to delay a little bit. So what I mean is you do this, maybe wait like a really short amount, because remember you only need to wait a tenth of a second so that you can get your stack. Because remember, you cannot gain more than one stack every 0.1 seconds. So you do hold, delay, and then you do your, your four normal attacks. Just so you can get in an extra stack. That's some really advanced stuff, but it's worth mentioning if you want to maximize your Eula's damage. If you want more help or like visual clarity on combos, I Win to Lose has a really, really good in-depth video that's way better than mine when it comes to doing Eula's combos. If you want to check that out, I'll have a link for it in the description below. All right, we're going to finally get to our combat showcase and we'll, I'll try to do the combo on this boss. So I'm just, right now I'm just trying to build energy for my Eula because I didn't come in here with a burst because I'm not thinking straight, I guess. <laughs> But let's just try to build bursts real fast. It's gonna take a bit. I don't even have Raiden's burst. Oh, he's mad. Let's build it up. Oh. Okay, we got it now. Alright, this is perfect. So we want to do skill, burst. One, two, three, four. Oh, I think I did that too early. I might have messed up a little bit, but I still did... Did you see that damage? That was like almost 300k, even for a scuff combo like that. And that's just proof that you don't have to play pixel perfect just to get the, the most out of your Eula's burst. That was a big damage. Alright, I feel like that last example was a little too short, so we're gonna do one more boss fight just to showcase Eula, and that'll be it. So let's take on the Aeon Blight here. We got our burst ready to go this time. I'm just gonna pop that. Get right to skill out, and then we do it again. So skill, burst, hopefully I don't mess this up. One, two, three, four. Into hold skill, and then delay a little bit. I think I might have gone a little too fast, but you do normal attack four times again. I didn't see how much you did there. Uh, let's try to build the uh, burst again. I don't think it crit. Don't want to use Raiden's burst because I might end up killing this thing. Alright, I just want to, uh, I just want my burst back, please. Alright, we should get it here. Alright, it's gonna fly, so we're gonna shoot it down with Sara here. So, skill. Burst. One, two, three, four. Hold. One, two... I keep forgetting to delay, I'm so sorry, you love means I'm laying you down. I believe that one didn't do that, that much because of the resistance on this enemy. I believe mechanical enemies have higher resistance uh, to physical attacks. Um, I'm not 100% sure on that. But I still think that was a pretty good showcase for Eula's damage, especially the first one was just went way too fast. But yeah, I, I think two examples is enough. So with that being said, that is going to be it for the guide. But I do want to just say one more thing about Eula. Um, and that is her Spiral Abyss performance. Now, if you do look up the percentages of characters used, you might see that Eula is on the, the lower end. And it's not because she's particularly bad or anything. Um, you could also say that, you know, just the Abyss getting harder with enemies getting more and more um, HP and then them favoring Hyper Bloom and stuff like that. But it is also because Eula is sort of like an all or nothing character, and that can be frustrating to play as. What do I mean by that? Well, you're kind of putting all of your chips, so to speak, on your burst. So if your burst whiffs, 
say you're fighting those consecrated beasts and they're moving all over the battlefield and you casted your burst and by the time it slams down nowhere near are those consecrated beasts well that's a reset you just wasted a bunch of time and you whiffed your biggest hit so you know reset other times it could be like oh your burst didn't crit here which could have saved you from getting you know the three stars or could have gotten you the three stars now instead you only got two because you did you know much less damage that's a reset stuff like that can be very very frustrating um to, to do as you're when you're playing as eula in like spiral abyss stuff um, and that's probably why you don't see her used as much. But with that being said, she is still viable in the Spiral Abyss. You still can use her, get all the stars, definitely possible. But it might take you a couple tries depending on, you know, your movement and your positioning when it comes to using her burst. And how well you're able to do her combo. I was not able to showcase a really good version of the combo where I delay it. But at the same time, that's okay. I just want to point that out. If you want to min-max your damage, then definitely try to go for that short delay after your elemental skill. Also, again, uh, I'll link a video if you want to see how it's actually done. Sorry again that this guide is forever long. I've been trying to make my guide shorter, around like 20-ish minutes. But when it comes to Eula, she is just a character that has just so much in her kit so much to talk about she has combos she has different she has different variations of combos like i only showed you one combo if you want to get in depth and look at even more combos you can do uh with eula and they become even more complex way past the scope of this video um by all means check them out there are definitely tons and tons of combos you can do for your eula to optimize her damage even further so if there's anything you feel like I've forgotten, despite this guy being very long, please feel free to let me know in the comments down below. I still learn as much about the characters from the comments as I do researching on them. Um, if you have any additional questions, feel free to ask. I will definitely help you as best as I can. Shoutouts again to Homegrown for letting me borrow his Eula for this video. And thank you so much for watching. If you stuck it all the way to the end, I very much appreciate that. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. It helps me out a bunch. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.